enzymes are catalysts and that these enzymes will lower the activation energy in order to speed up a reaction. Let's talk about how uh, some of the ways that enzymes can actually do change and these are due to basically temperature and pH. So let's take a look at the properties first of all enzymes, um, at least most enzymes, and then we'll talk about temperature and pH. So all enzymes have certain properties and uh, these are the six properties. So these are something that you should definitely take a look at and study. Now all enzymes are proteins. That's definitely number one. We have stated that already. All enzymes are proteins. Number two, enzymes are made inactive by high temperatures. So that active site does not work if these enzymes are at extremely high temperatures. Number three, Enzymes work best at specific temperatures. So this means that enzymes like a specific temperature in order to work. Kind of like you, if it's too hot or too cold, you might not be at your best. But if you're just right, you're going to work your hardest. Number four, enzymes work best at a specific pH. Now this is how basic or how acidic something can be. So some enzymes like a more basic or more alkaline environment, where some like a more acidic environment. So it depends on the type of enzyme, it might work best in specific types of pH. Now again, enzymes are catalysts. This is number five. Now I know it's kind of related back to number one, but remember all enzymes are proteins all enzymes are catalysts. And number six, enzymes are specific, basically meaning that one enzyme will take care of specific substrates. Usually one enzyme for a substrate. You don't see any enzymes that take care of multiple substrates. They're very, very specific. So I mentioned in those six characteristics that high temperature kind of changes or makes enzymes inactive. Well, this is something that we call denature. So high temperature denatures enzymes. Now as temperature increases, molecules move faster and faster. Remember, this is just a basic, uh, a basic particle movement of all things. As temperature rises, the particles are going to try to move faster and faster. Now this means as the temperature increases, enzymes will more than likely bump into substrates more often. And this is, could be a good thing because this means that more enzymes that bump into substrates, this means that more enzymes will change those substrates into products. So we're going to get more of the products involved. So it's, it might be a good thing here. However, high temperatures can damage enzymes. Now, this is a bad thing. So you don't want to pump, the hot, uh, pump up the temperature too much because that's going to also damage that enzyme. Now this changes the shape of the active site so they do not fit perfectly together with the substrate. Remember we talked about that lock and key model. Now imagine trying to take the, the lock and it changes because it melts a little bit. Well your key is not going to fit in there anymore. This is exactly what's going on here. If the temperature is too high, that active site will change, so the substrate can't fit into there anymore. Now this is then said, or this is said, that the enzyme is said to be denatured. And now when something's denatured, it basically means that uh, somehow that enzyme has changed its shape, so the active site does not work anymore. Now sometimes it can be very hard for the enzyme to change back. In most cases, the enzyme is done. Once it has become denatured, it cannot change back into the original form. So this can hurt, um, this can severely hurt animals and plants and whatever um, organism that this enzyme is trying to work at. So high temperatures can damage enzymes. They become denatured. Now the temperature at which an enzyme works fastest is its optimum temperature. Now, this is the perfect temperature that it's going to work its best. 
Now, different enzymes have different optimum temperatures. So it really depends upon what enzyme we're talking about here. Now, for example, enzymes in the human digestive system will work best at about 37 degrees Celsius, which is about 99 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you think about it, that's kind of like your internal body temperature. Now, enzymes from plants might work best around 28 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, or about 82 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So depending upon the type of enzyme, this will determine the optimum temperature for that particular enzyme. So don't think that all enzymes work best at the same temperature. It depends upon the type of enzyme in the environment that it works best at will determine the type or the, the temperature, its optimum temperature that it's going to work best at. Now this is, um, this is a chart showing you the rate of reaction of an enzyme. So the rate of reaction of an enzyme will change at different temperatures. So this is just a generic enzyme that we're going to take a look at. Now notice we've graphed here the rate of reaction on our y-axis, and we've graphed our temperature in degrees Celsius on our x-axis. And we have gone about every 10 degrees, kind of we jump. Now this blue line is representing the enzyme. The enzyme itself, if you notice, it's going to uh, go faster, so the rate of reaction increases as the temperature increases. So the molecules are going to gain kinetic energy here. Now, notice we reach an optimum temperature at about 60 degrees Celsius. This is the highest peak of temperature that we have here, so this is going to be the optimum temperature. And the reason why I know this is because now, as we're moving back down this line, notice that the rate of reaction is going down as the temperature still rises. Now, I know here that the enzyme is denaturing, or perhaps just somewhere up here it has become denatured. That active site has changed, so the substrates cannot fit perfectly in there. So this is an important chart or important graph to understand what is kind of going on. This is, again, a general one, but if I were to show you others, you'd be able to tell the optimum temperature for that specific enzyme. Now pH also affects enzymes, sort of in the same way that temperature does. Now enzymes prefer to work at an optimum pH, just like an optimum temperature. It has a very specific pH that it likes to work at and that it works best at. So outside of its pH range, the enzyme is denatured. It is not going to work at all. Now for most enzymes, the optimum pH is about 7, which is neutral. It's neither alkaline, basic, or acidic. So it's sort of kind of in the middle. And if you see this, again, we have another chart here, another graph. Now amylase itself is right here. Notice amylase kind of has an optimum pH of 7. So this particular chart has, um, or graph, looks exactly the same as the pH one. Notice we have the rate of reaction over on the y-axis, and we have the pH this time on the x-axis. And we're showing two different enzymes. We have pepsin and we have amylase. Now amylase is the enzyme that changes starch into maltose, so we have um, amylase working best at pH 7. Pepsin, however, pepsin prefers to be at a pH at about 2. Now, if you know what pepsin is, pepsin is the enzyme that's found in our human digestive tract. So our human digestive tract is very, very acidic. So pepsin has to be able to work in a very acidic environment. So it's going to work best at about pH 2. Anything higher than that, pepsin becomes denatured. So if your stomach becomes more alkaline, or basically more, um, more basic, your pepsin, the, en the enzyme that's in your stomach, is not going to work. So it's kind of important to keep your digestive system at a 
good pH and have optimum pH for all those enzymes to actually do its job.